Hey everyone, today I'm going to quickly talk about the ending of Black Museum while adding some more clarity to the story and answering some questions people might have after watching the episode. And just a really big warning before we continue the tour, in this video there will be spoilers for Black Museum and almost every single episode of Black Mirror. So if you haven't watched all of Black Mirror yet, go watch all of it. But definitely not in one sitting because I think you'd be emotionally compromised if you were to binge the show in a very short time span. Either way, you have been warned for the spoilers and the psychological pain that comes with the show. So with that said, here we go. Black Museum follows Nish, a girl innocently traveling cross country on a vacation to visit her dad for his B-Day. When on this tune-filled road trip, Nish's car runs out of power so she pulls over to recharge. When making the pit stop, she stumbles onto a place called Black Museum, where the owner Rollo Haynes has collected a lot of criminal artifacts from the previous episodes of the Black Mirror universe. Haynes takes Nish on the tour, telling her horrifying and brilliant stories from his past in the medical field. And for the main attraction, he is holding a digital version of a man named Clayton, who Haynes took the consciousness of and dumped it into a digital torture chamber. But as it turns out, Nish is Clayton's daughter, and she's there on a mission to free her dad from the prison and take revenge on Haynes. Black Museum has a large collection of references and easter eggs from the Black Mirror universe. Probably too many to get into today. I'd be absolutely out of my mind to go through the long list of every easter egg that I found. So I'm gonna. For starters, the gas station Nish stops at right next to the museum is named BRB Connect, in direct reference to the episode Be Right Back, as that episode opens with Martha and Ash's van stopped at a gas station. Once Nish gets past the metal detector and begins the tour, behind her and Rollo is a picture of Victoria from White Bear. There is also a mannequin wearing Baxter's outfit, wielding the shotgun and wearing the mask with the iconic symbol. There's a copy of Charlie Brooker's face that can be seen hanging on the wall with all of the other masks. Later in the episode, Jack is reading a comic called 15 Million Merits, telling the story about Bing from that episode. In Haynes' first story at St. Juniper's, the lab rats Haynes pulls out are named Kenny and Hector, named after the main characters in Shut Up and Dance. An ADI or synthetic B from Hated in the Nation is on display. On the wall right next to the screen Victoria shows up on, there's a text that appears reading Cloning Without Consent in reference to USS Callister, and the device from USS Callister that Robert Daly used to duplicate his co-workers is seen on display with Tommy's lollipop on the tray of it, even though Cole took it from Daly's refrigerator at the end of the episode. On display is the tablet device smashed and bloodied up from when Sarah hit Marie over the head with it in Archangel. A mugshot of Mia from Crocodile is hung up near the monkey in the display case, and the bathtub in the middle of the room is the same bathtub that Shazia's husband was taking a bath in when Mia murdered him. And Black Museum also shares the same story structure as White Christmas, of two people in a room talking while we are told three stories that all lead up to the big twist at the end. And phew, we're done. That was all of the Easter eggs. Just kidding. The tours of the museum start at 11. Black Mirror first aired in 2011. The outfit Haynes wore was largely inspired by the types of three-piece suits Pendulette wears, as Pendulette wrote the short story that the Pain Attic storyline was based off of. Nish, who is played by Letitia Wright, is secretly an American pretending to have a British accent, when in real life, Letitia is British and is pretending to have an American accent for the role. Not really an Easter egg, I just thought that was a cool fact. Black Museum is inspired by Orson Welles and his radio show, The Black Museum, where Wells would narrate true crime stories from the Real Crime Museum at New Scotland Yard, a museum created in 1874, years after the Prisoner's Property Act of 1869, giving this museum the opportunity to grow a collection of property and belongings from prisoners. And last but not least, the hospital Rollo Haynes goes to is called St. Juniper Hospital. He works there for TCKR Industries. The sign can be seen above the doorway when he walks Dawson up to the 10th floor floor of St. Juniper. TCKR Industries is the same company that runs and maintains the simulation known as San Junipero. Also, San Junipero is just Spanish for St. Juniper. St. Juniper Hospital is also the hospital that Stefan goes to in Bandersnatch, and in that episode, Stefan also works for Tuckersoft, a name that implies Tuckersoft may be the company that grew and expanded into being TCKR Industries. The device Haynes attached to Clayton was the same little circular device Kelly and Yorkie used 
Blues to access and eventually get uploaded into San Junipero. At this point in Black Museum, San Junipero is a normality in their world. Nish even asks, like when they upload old people to the cloud? The past experience Haynes has at TCKR Industries shows us how they accomplish the digital consciousness transfer, as it all started with the lab rats communicating physical sensations. This research would eventually be built upon and evolve into becoming something that could transfer consciousness smoothly. So the pain addict and the monkey needs a hug storyline are just casualties necessary to create the bright world of San Junipero. As we see the first prototype of the consciousness transfer with the rats, as well as seeing the very first prototype of what will eventually look like a small receiver device used to transfer the consciousness. Then we see the mind of Carrie getting transferred for the first time. The stick used is just a bigger, bulkier, more analog version of the same device. Then we see the final product when Haynes puts the device on Clayton's head, as it looks exactly like the one they put on Kelly and Yorkie as they passed over. So Black Museum is technically the prequel for San Junipero. Now that's all the easter eggs I've noticed. I mentioned before that Black Mirror is typically a show that focuses on futuristic technology that can be used for widespread good, but humans end up corrupting it and using the new tech for something more destructive than originally intended. And because of this, we're gonna talk about Rolo Haynes. In Black Mirror, we focus on people like a Lacey or a Sarah's mom or an Amy or a Liam or a Stripe or a Bing. People who are the byproducts of their society. People who are put into a situation where this new tech or these new concepts already exist or are just being implemented. Then they are either corrupted, used, or destroyed by the new tech or the people manipulating it. It's only in a few episodes that we observe the actual creators of the tech and we see how they execute their designs on the living, like Robert Daly in USS Callister. So what makes Haynes different from most villains in the Black Mirror universe is that he is the one helping create and run trials on this new tech, knowing for sure that it will have a negative impact on the people doing the test trials. Haynes preys on people that are desperate. He will say and do anything to get them to participate in his schemes and experiments, taking advantage of their ignorance and vulnerability. For example, when talking with the husband of Carrie, Rolo mentions that we only use 40% of our brains, and claims there is enough room to fit another human consciousness in that other 60%. But this is false. In real life, a good majority of our brain is actually active at the same time. In fact, the actual popular myth is that we only use 10% of our brain. Rolo is just lying through his teeth to make people more susceptible and get them to say yes to him. He's just trying to sell his idea like a shady car salesman named Harold. He also does this again when he gets Clayton to sign over his mind, after Haynes claimed that his family would get a share of the profits, but that never ended up happening. Earlier in the episode, Haynes even says never trust a guy in tech. Jesus, I should know that. He was beaten by the new rules of a society and then tried to find a way to corrupt this new technology again. He is someone that we see blatantly manipulate this equipment for pure enjoyment and self-interest. Haynes doesn't care about people. He experimented on a doctor and didn't answer Dawson's cries for help. Dawson looked like a terrified puppy when he came to Haynes, but Rolo looked this distressed man in the eyes and just told him to take it easy, purposefully not giving proper help to Dawson and creating a monster in the process, which would lead to multiple deaths. Haynes condemned Carrie's consciousness into a monkey, and that monkey ended up being displayed in a glass box on the floor of his museum. The UN made it illegal to transfer human consciousness into limited formats like the monkey, as it needed to be able to express at least five emotions for it to be considered humane, not just monkey loves you or monkey needs a hug. After bringing this up, Haynes chuckles when he says human rights for cookies, and when he mentions that the monkey is one of the saddest items in the museum, he says it not because Carrie was still trapped in the monkey, but because it was the one object that ended his career. Plus, after all of that, I think this was the key indicator that he was a blight on humanity. In Hated in the Nation, we observe a society that contributes to the hashtag death2 movement, a movement where the person with the highest amount of hashtag death2 posts made about them that day will die. It focuses on a society that can be so quick to judge and accuse someone who is not well liked by harassing them over the internet to the point where the public takes it a step further and tries to punish the accused themselves. In the episode White Bear, we observe a society that has formed an amusement park to punish Victoria after she filmed Ian Rennick murdering a little girl. People bring their families to the park to help recreate her crime on a mass scale as they film Victoria while people try to kill her. In the episode White Christmas, we see the police wrongfully make Potter's cookie experience 1,000 years a minute in the cabin, locking him 
been there for 1,440,000 years, making him listen to Wizard's hit song, I Wish It Could Be Christmas Every Day, for a total of 154,462,040,816 times. Black Museum possesses every single bad piece of tech and every artifact from the Black Mirror universe, and the tour guide, Haynes, possesses everything wrong with the people in the Black Mirror universe, like White Bear, Hated in the Nation, and White Christmas. Rolo was quick to jump to conclusions about Clayton, like how his society will condemn someone so easily over the internet, and Haynes tricked a prisoner by giving him false security for his family, then put Clayton into a form of torture that the public views as a source of entertainment. When talking about starting the museum, Haynes claimed that it appealed to the carny in him. He looks at these crimes as entertainment. When conceptualizing Clayton's prison cell, he claims, but pulling the lever yourself? Now that's an attraction. Black Museum is his own little amusement park or justice park. Then Haynes takes it a step further and creates a way to infinitely torture the duplicates of Clayton by copying his consciousness onto other devices like keychains, making Clayton experience the same moment of being electrocuted over and over again. Almost as bad as making him listen to I Wish It Could Be Christmas Every Day for 154,462,040,816 times. Some people were confused about why exactly Nish had her mom in her head at the end, and we just have to look further at the hints in the episode to give us an explanation. Nish is obviously a smart cookie, not in the digital transfer of consciousness, but meaning she is intelligent and proficient with technology. She created a device to sabotage the AC unit, and she created the tools necessary to replicate the consciousness transfer, just like with the monkey experiment or San Junipero. So when she asks, like when they upload old people to the cloud, Nish was just playing dumb. When Nish's mom was starting the protest for Clayton and was gaining traction, the museum was definitely something that was brought up and mentioned, since this was one of the reasons people stopped showing up. During this time, Nish could have learned of what happened to her dad, and more about the equipment and technology used on him, while also learning about Rolo Haynes himself, and the experiments related to Dawson and Carrie way beforehand. After all, Nish knew exactly what she was going to do with Haynes and Clayton when at her dad's digital prison cell. She must have had the same knowledge of the tech when her mom killed herself, so she was probably able to think fast and save her mom when she found her dying, as she was skilled enough to put the mind of Haynes into the consciousness of her dad, then rig the system to kill her dad but make Haynes suffer for eternity in the keychain. And speaking of keychains, I've heard a lot of people asking the same question regarding the dad's keychains, asking if Nish sets Clayton free from the jail, aren't there keychains with the consciousness of him still suffering? Since all the museum goers who pulled the lever received a souvenir, I get asked this question verbatim on a daily basis. Like just the other day, some guy came up to me and asked me this very question, to which I initially responded to him with, who are you, please get out of my home, I'm calling the cops. But after a few more times of having this question brought up to me by other intruders, I decided that somebody should address it, so. It's not stated how far into the future the world of Black Museum is, making it trivial how much energy it would take to power the keychains. However, it does take three hours to power Nish's car, so there's that. But there's a bus that shows up in the early days of the museum. The bus is covered with different flags from different countries, implying that people are coming from all around the world. But then the UN sanctioned a law that gave rights to cookies. It's implied that any inhumane treatment to a cookie in your possession was made illegal all over the world, or at least the countries falling under the UN. This would definitely apply to anyone possessing these keychains. But people might have also turned them off or destroyed them due to moral reasons. After the mom led the campaign for Clayton to reveal that he may not have committed the murder, being one of the main reasons people stopped showing up at the museum. At this point, we have a good idea of who Haynes is and what he represents. He is a liar and a scammer. He promised Clayton that his family would be provided for for the rest of their lives if he were to just sign over the rights to his digital self. Although it's never shown that Nish or her mom received a cent. He says that the family abandoned Clayton the moment he got locked up, but Nish's mom was there through the entire thing. The only reason Haynes still has Clayton in the cell is because Clayton signed the papers that gave Haynes the permission to put him there. Clayton already paid the price for his murder, as he was given the death penalty. Haynes just further tortures him, making him experience the electrocution a countless amount of times, after it should have just been a one-and-done kind of thing. In the eyes of the law, Clayton was guilty. However, it's not uncommon for someone on death row to have new evidence and facts surface about 
about them after their execution that could have cleared their name. Nish even says that she never accepts drinks from strangers, and she learned that from her dad, and that might be the way Clayton got his DNA crossed with someone else, which is why Clayton was so persistent about getting the DNA test. In the monkey needs a hug story, the news reporter announces that Clayton was found guilty for the horrific murder of the weather reporter Denise Stockley, whose mutilated remains were discovered one year ago. The fact that her body was mutilated just further hints to us that it wasn't Clayton, but it could have been Dawson, since we already see Dawson mutilate himself and other people in the pain addict story. Just something to think about. Nish even brings up the documentary and DNA testing, but without any thought, Haynes dismisses any facts or proof that Clayton didn't commit the murder. Like the blind and hateful mobs of White Bear and Hated in the Nation. While the episode doesn't give us a straight answer, it does make us question if Clayton was actually guilty, while hinting at the fact that he most likely was not. We see a future where someone can be wrongfully punished by a biased accuser as they take justice into their own hands and torture them in the afterlife, while doing it for pleasure and for entertainment, while capitalizing on the torture of a possibly not guilty man. What I like about Cookies is that it brings up the debate of how long you can actually punish someone for their crime. As Kelly mentions in San Junipero, who can even make sense of forever? Potter from White Christmas was put into a torture scenario for almost one and a half million years. This is relatively forever in the perspective of humans. Pieces of Clayton's consciousness were taken and put through unbearable pain, forever existing on multiple keychains. None of this was right, yet it was still happening to Clayton. In order to prevent inhumane treatment, Nish has to, doesn't want to, has to take action against Haynes herself. She claims as soon as the state didn't do anything about Clayton's digital duplicate, the public just moved on to the next viral miscarriage of justice that they can hang a hashtag off of, referencing the society of hated in the nation. The state and the people wouldn't do anything about Clayton, so Nish had to take action into her own hands. This is one of the most justifiable causes in all of Black Mirror, unlike any of the other cases where we see someone taking the law into their own hands. So no doubt we're on Nish's side in this episode. Her freeing Clayton and Carrie, as well as killing Haynes, is something that we wanted at this point. Guilty or not, Clayton already served his sentence, and now he can be laid to rest. Carrie can be extracted from the monkey and put into San Junipero, and Nish kills Haynes and puts an end to his experiments. Then our protagonist drives off into the sunset, leaving the old world behind, just like the ending of San Junipero. But instead of getting a happy ending, we're a little bit more conflicted with the ending of Black Museum, especially after seeing Nish's mom in her head. Something about it was a little jarring. Plus, Nish crafts her own keychain of Haynes suffering in the moment of his electrocution. She purposefully tortured Rollo the same way he electrocuted Clayton. And even if Nish did not intentionally make the keychain, she still keeps it, smiling as she hangs it on her mirror, a device that will torture Haynes forever, kind of repeating the same acts of Haynes. And because of this, is Nish still considered to be better than the officers from White Christmas, who left the simulation running as they smiled? Robert Daly, who put others into a torture chamber for pleasure, Baxter, who led the organization torturing Victoria, making it just a nice opportunity for a family outing. The citizens of Hated in the Nation that used hashtag death too. Haynes or any other person using this technology to take justice into their own hands, while seeking pleasure from doing so. Making us question the morality of our protagonist, as Nish now tortures someone for the pleasure of it. No different from the people pulling the lever at the museum. Even after the new humane laws and progressive changes for cookies and other tech, as Nish is leaving Black Museum burning behind her, we are still left with the moral ambiguity and the big gray area that comes with this new technology. And that was all I had to say about Black Museum. Thank you guys so much for your support these past few weeks and helping my channel grow. It really means a lot to me, and it's really been awesome to see how many people love to discuss and analyze these episodes. And if you're new to my channel, Black Mirror is one of my favorite shows, and I really love making analysis videos on it. In fact, if you like this ending explained, I have an entire playlist of Black Mirror Explained videos that you should definitely check out, as I am uploading new content to it all the time. And please subscribe to support this channel. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in my next Black Mirror Ending Explained.